Hello everybody and welcome to another Project Spark uh, tutorial. My name is Ryan Wilshire, otherwise known as uh, Abra. And today we are going to be talking about uh, side scroller enemies and how to create them. So if you guys remember from the original side scroller tutorial, okay, um, all I've done is I've just taken what we created there and I, you know, like I mentioned during the tutorial, I deleted all the land and I used a scale zero brush, a scale zero square brush to create this small little piece of land because that's uh, how we really should be doing it. Uh, I've also gone in to the world settings and uh, I set the water level down so we don't have any, any water um, bothering us, <laughs> so to speak. But I can, I can bring that back. So that we have uh, something. Uh, let's get it up there a bit. Oh, this is taking a while, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's around nine when it. Yeah, here we go. Okay, all right. So this is our level. We're gonna start it up. And. We've got our full side scroller camera, our controls. We're running around, okay? So from the, the first tutorial, just remember, the whole thing is basically these four lines of code here, okay? You've got your boom camera. You've got this value here, setting where the global locked axis is. And then here we're constantly resetting our position X to be equal to the global axis so that you can't move off of it. And this is our code for movement, right? Our move in direction south, the speed left stick X. If you want a complete explanation of that, watch the, the other tutorial. I highly recommend it. Okay? So, but today we're going to be talking about enemies. So, if any of you did that tutorial, and you took a goblin, and you kind of plopped him down here, and let's, let's rotate him around so he's at least, you know, kind of facing our player, you'll probably notice a few problems here. All right. So he kind of runs at us. All right, that's great. But you'll notice he's not necessarily on the same plane as us. And I can just walk right there. I can just push him away, right? Just push him right off. Or I can hit him, and he'll he'll eventually go kind of off of our plane, if you will. Okay. So this is not ideal. This is not what we want. Okay. You can see there he went way off. Okay, so how do we prevent this? Well, if you remember, in our player brain, okay, we created a global variable called locked axis. And by making it a global variable, this means that we can access it from any brain we want. Okay, that's why we did that. So if we go in here, and we just add one little line of code here, where nothing on the when side, all right, but on the do side, we say, Position, oops, x is equal to global, our global variable, locked axis, right? Because that's that global variable that we created over here. And now we play it, and now we're resetting the goblin's position to that uh, that position on the x-axis the whole time. And now you can see he's on our plane. And we can't run through him no matter what we do. Okay? And we cannot knock him off of that path. Okay? And that's that's really, that's how you create a, a side-scroller enemy as far as making sure he stays on the plane. But uh, that's not really what we're going for here, right? I mean, we won't, you know, I'm... I would be expecting for something a little bit a little bit cooler in the in this tutorial. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a Mario style enemy here, where uh, if you kind of walk into it, you die, but if you jump on his head, you kill him. Right now, oh my goodness, how on earth would we do that? That's that's that sounds crazy. Well, it's actually really really easy in Project Spark. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to use, go into the brain of the goblin, okay? And we're going to insert another line of code here. And now we're going to do, 
Well, actually, well, all right. Before I do this, normally you could do when bump, and I can just see use uh, player. Okay. But if you remember from my, if you watched the the top down shooter tutorial, I said I really don't like to use the player tile. Just this is a personal habit of mine, and because the player tile doesn't always necessarily refer to the object that you want. In this case it will, but I just like to have more control over it in case you've got any kind of a character selection uh, sequence, uh, things can get uh, messy. So what we're going to do is we're in the player's brain, we're going to say once, and we're going to create another global variable, and we're going to call it global, and we're going to go into our object variables, new object variable, play, and we're going to call this player oops alright global player and this is going to be equal to me alright and this just gives us a variable that we can use to always refer to this player we know that when we use global player it is always no matter what going to refer to this object right here unless we decide later on to set it to something else okay um all this is doing is this is just replacing this player tile. This player tile should do it, but we're avoiding it because, uh, well, we don't, I don't like the player. It, it, it acts strangely sometimes, okay? So here what we're going to do is we're going to bump global player. Well, what does that mean, bump? Well, if you take it literally, it means when the player bumps into the goblin, right? That's what this does. So we're going to say, when the player bumps into the goblin, when it touches it, then we're going to just do, we're going to say kill. And here we've got two options. We can say kill global player, or we can say kill it. And using the it is actually a, a good habit to get into, because this it variable, it refers to whatever you happen to bump into. Now here we're we're restricting this where so we can say only against the global player but you can actually um, uh, later on when you get to play with object lists uh, you know you will need to use this it variable to refer to whatever it happened to be that you were bumping into but for now this should be good okay so whenever the, the goblin bumps into the player the player is gonna die let's try this out let's see if this works all right da -da -da. Oh my god, he touched me and I'm dead. <laughs> the horror. Okay. So that looks like it's, it's working beautifully, right? I mean, but this creates a bit of a problem for us in that if I even, I can't even attack him because, oh, okay, well, there we go. Wow, I managed to, my fists didn't actually touch, touch him. Got lucky there. All right. But normally, uh, the moment you touch him, the player's going to die every time. But we don't want that because if we jump on his head now... We still die, right? So we we jump up, and the player just simply dies because he, as soon as he touched him, he's dead, right? So, in order to prevent this, we're going to be using something called a trigger zone. Okay. Now, what is a trigger zone? Well, it's basically a box, and you can place this box wherever you want, in front, behind the character, however you want to position it. And we can check against when objects enter that box. So for the goblin, go into edit, then go to properties, brain, and then under sensors, you'll find this show trigger sensor. And you want to enable that. You want to set that to true. So by setting that to true, we now have this giant box surrounding our goblin. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab the handle here, all right? And now we can move this as we see fit, okay? We move it up, down, and then when we, we can also scale it. And that's what we're going to do here. We're going to scale this, and we're going to move this down, scale it down some more, move it down a bit more. I'm going to move it ah, right around there, Just move it down, and then I'm also going to scale it in the Z axis. Okay. 
And now what we're going to want to do is actually we're going to lower this down so that it actually goes a bit below him but is not covering the top half of his body. Okay? So you see how we're covering the lower half but not the top half. All right? Because the top half is where you're going to actually kill him. So going back into the goblin's brain. All right? We've got our when bump global player we're just killing him well let's let's remove the kill it for now and after we bump when we bump the goblin we're gonna do another check and this one is gonna say when in trigger zone global player so now it's gonna say when the player bumps the goblin when he actually touches him oh apologize for that there's a massive truck outside anyways okay when the player is in the in when the player bumps the player and he's ha he happens to be in that trigger zone, then we're going to kill him. <laughs> right? Kill it. Okay. But if he's not, okay, we're going to use another tile here called else. Right. So the idea is. If this is not true, if he is not in the trigger zone, okay, when this happens, then instead of killing uh, killing the player, we're going to kill me, right? Which is killing the goblin. Okay, so if he's in the trigger, if he's in the trigger zone, he's going to kill the player. If he's not in the trigger zone, he's going to kill me. So the idea is. If you look at this, right, the only way for him to, if he's not in the trigger zone, that means he's above him. He's jumping on his head, right, when he bumps him. But if he bumps him and he's in the trigger zone, that means he's, you know, down below, over here, or underneath him, and that's when the player's going to die. So we come along here, and if we just walk into the guy... He dies because his legs, the character's legs, entered the trigger zone, and then he bumped him, right? Oops. No, I do not want a screenshot. I want to restart. But if I jump on his head, you see the goblin dies. Look at that, all right? But we're still not quite there yet because what we want is we want a Mario-style effect here, right? We want the player to, to kind of hop off of his head. So how do we do that? Well, going back into the goblin's brain again. In this case, we're saying, kill me. All right, so we're going to delete that. And we're going to add another line here. And we're going to move it up. We're going to indent it one here. So it, again, it happens when the else happens. Okay. And we're going to put a started to tab. So this only ever executes one, this only ever happens once. All right. And we're going to say push. It, right? And this is this is going to be referring to the player. Okay? Push the player because it's whoever bumped him. I'm just using it because it's a good it's a good habit to get into. All right? In direction. And we're going to say world up. So push the player in the direction of up, right? At strength. And I think 15 is probably a good value. I don't know. Okay. And then, after we push the player, then we're going to kill myself as well. Okay, kill me. All right, so basically we jump on his head, we get pushed up into the air, and then the goblin dies. Oops. Oh my gosh. Oh, I landed on the side. Uh, man, I'm terrible. You didn't see any of that. Folks. There we go. All right. Look at that. True Mario style. Isn't that great? 
Okay. Um, and now I guess there's one final thing here where you gotta realize, my, you know, enemies in Mario did not come at you and attack like this, right? Okay. They just kind of did their own thing, right? They were just walking back and forth. So what we're going to do is we're going to create that kind of movement in our goblin. All right. So uh, we don't really need any of this team two stuff because he's not actually attacking anybody or any of this. All right. So we just basically got our, our basic code here. And all we're going to do is we're going to say, um, eh, what's the best thing to do here? We'll create we'll create a boolean value here. And remember, a boolean value can only be set to true or false. So once, and I'm going to create a boolean, and we're going to say uh, walking north, right? So once we say, and we're going to set this equal to true. Okay. And now I'm going to put a, a when walking north. And we're going to put a little indentation here. So this only happens when we're walking north. We're going to move. In direction. North. Okay. And then... So basically, this character is only going to move in direction north. It's going to completely ignore the player. It's very simple AI, if you will. All right. And then we're going to do a countdown of, uh, say, two seconds. All right. And we're going to say walking north is equal to false. Oops, not, yes, okay, there we go, false. Okay. And then here, what we're going to do is I'm going to say when not walking north. All right. Then what we're going to do is we're going to do the exact same thing. except we're going to move in the direction of south. Uh, oops. Or it's south. Okay. And then we're going to take our countdown as well. Our countdown of two. And this is going to be set to true. And so basically it's going to be alternating between these. It's going to be walking north and there's going to be walking south. Right? And if we watch this... You can see that all he's doing is just walking back and forth, right? And as a player, you either have to avoid him or, of course, jump on his head. And that's how you do create a side-scroller enemy. I guess if you want one, one additional type, we can just copy him. Then we can have even simpler AI. Right, where we delete all of this. And we have no walking north or walking south. <laughs> we just make him jump over and over and over and over again. So now we got two in here. And wow, these guys are vicious now, right? And now you gotta, you know, hey, oh, let me. Oh, jeez, he got me. Because you gotta jump on his head, right? There we go. He has one. Oh. oh I'm gonna I'm gonna get this. I'm gonna get this once before we Oh I'm landing in front of <laughs> Oh, I need to play more Mario apparently. Alright, 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 alright. There was one. There we go. And there's the other guy. There's the other guy. Alright. So 
I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial on how to create uh, side scroller enemies. Uh, don't forget to uh, subscribe if you enjoyed it, and uh, I'll see you soon uh, with more tutorials. Thank you very much.